for that. Let's see if that stays on there. Probably not. about with it so this morning's video is a bit of an unusual one because I don't really do these video, video logs anymore vlogs whatever you want to call them because there's always someone that gets offended there's always someone that complains there's always someone that, that ends up maybe in the office because I've said something I shouldn't have said so that's why this one not in uniform I'm not going to work so, about a week ago, about two, but by the time you see this, I think, Bojo, or Bojo the Clown as I call him, and before people go, you can't call him Bojo the Clown, you can't, just did. The reason I call him Bojo the Clown is because, not because he's crap, not because he's anything like that, because I've never seen a politician get in more trouble going to schools and doing publicity stunts than Bojo. A political stunt, or one of them things they do to go, oh look, we're normal. Bojo the clown is guaranteed the ability to fuck it up. Guaranteed, as he's done on many occasions. So, because not, I've, uh, lips are all dry because I've uh, not long got up and I uh, dehydrated last night. I do that a lot overnight, always dehydrate. So, I always wake up with a bit of a high temperature and a dry throat. Get some drink down, man. Give it an hour, fine. So before anyone goes, coronavirus! No. It's normal for me, even in the height of winter when knowing you get in the bed and you're freezing your bollocks off. By the time I wake up, I'll be dehydrated and have a temperature. Because I get so warm in bed. A bit like a water bottle in a way. But anyway, it's going off topic back to topic. So, Bojo the Clown and the other fools that exist in that office decided that face masks, coverings, whatever you want to call them, should be mandatory on buses. And everybody has jumped on their high horse with this one. And I sit and read the comments sad on like Twitter for a company I work for and other companies of people complaining and taking pictures because there's people without masks on and unfortunately I can only say how sad a bit like the same person that reported me but that was for something different completely still sad though so, with that said, you'll notice that bus drivers, other than those that get the bus, to be honest, those that don't get the bus, you would have heard about it, right? Don't enforce it. You might go, why don't bus drivers enforce it? Well, if we enforced it, we open ourselves up for a lot of trouble. What we're saying is when someone gets on the bus, right, if we're going, have you got a mask? No. But you can't travel them. So you're telling someone they can't go to where they need to go. You become enemy public enemy number one. And it happens unfortunately. And it means that we end up getting abuse, 
worn at, spat at, people attempt to attack us. So we won't enforce it. Because it's not worth our life, potentially, of getting stabbed or something like that, to tell someone, oh, you need a mask and it's to turn violent. So then others go, oh, you ring the police when they don't pay a fare. No, we don't. What we do is we record it as an unpaid fare, report it when we get back to depot, and if it becomes a hot spot, a trouble spot, they send out inspectors with the police to enforce fares. As a bus driver, we are not expected to get into confrontation. Doesn't matter what company you work for, every company's policy is the same on that. You are not expected to get into confrontation with passengers over anything. So back to the original point now then. Well, why don't we just ring the police if someone won't put a mask on? Not an urgent call. I've got 20 people on my bus. And this guy won't leave or this woman won't leave because she won't put a mask on. But then she won't leave the bus either. So am I meant to get the 20 people to wait for an hour, two hours, Why the police attend? No, because that's not fair on the passengers. You might go, well, it's not fair just to allow him to travel or him to travel. It's not, because the rules are the rules and the law is the law. But it's far easier. If you do that, you're allowing them at their own risk to get caught by the police without a face covering on. And that's their choice, their problem. Not mine, not yours, their problem. The other big fact, and a guy actually had a go at me and called me a C-bomb word, right? Because there weren't people with masks on. And I tried pointing it out to him, and he called me that and said, I don't need to listen to you. Well, that is the exact attitude that we get. And what it was, was I was doing a service and I don't challenge anyone. You get on, you show me a ticket, you pay a fare, you sit down. That's that. I am paid to drive the bus from point A to point B via AA, BB, CC and so on. Right? Not there to police anything. My role of a bus driver, it was a bus driver. Not conductor, security guard, revenue inspector, bus driver. And you, you may also then think with that attitude, that's why companies lose money. No. Because if we get assaulted at work, the company pays out, has to pay out by the union. So it makes more sense for us not to get into confrontation. It also can cost thousands in lawsuits. But this, as I say, back to this guy. So this guy came to me and he went, ah, isn't everyone supposed to wear a face mask in the bus? But not everyone. But there are certain people that are exempt. And I am not a doctor, nor am I medically qualified to judge who is and who isn't exempt of the matter. Yeah, but everyone's got to wear a face mask. And what I was trying to hint at him was that there are people with medical reasons that don't need to wear them. Like people over 65, I think it was, or 70, don't need to wear them. Children under 11 don't need to wear them. People with breathing difficulties, such as asthma, on the buses don't need to wear them. In shops, it's different for some reason. And there's a long list of reasons why you don't need to wear one including the very broad term of the mask causes distress when put on. So distress can be anything from you feel it's hard to breathe. That's distress. So if you feel it's bad enough, then you make yourself exempt. But we can, as a bus driver, we can ask, have you got a mask? If you say no, that's the end of the conversation. Right there. If you say yes, that's the end of the conversation. Both times you get to travel. Why? Because as a bus driver, or an inspector,
doctor, company official, we do not have the right to ask why. And that is as simple as it gets. We do not have the right to ask why don't you need a mask. If you tell us, then that's fine. But if we ask why, same as what the shop staff do, they ask why don't you need to wear a mask, you are getting into the round of equal disability. Uh, Equalities Act, sorry, disability discrimination. Because if you say you refuse someone because they've got a breathing difficulty, and they say they're exempt, right? You are denying that person with a disability the same rights as someone without one, even though it's law. That is why we have an Equality Act and why we have a Dis Disability Discrimination Act. So if I was to refuse someone on the bus, say, for not wearing a mask, then I could be breaking that and that can, can bring a very, very large lawsuit in for companies. Which is why the shop staff have made a massive U-turn, and I mean a massive U-turn, because two days ago it was, you ain't getting in no matter what. The MEM reported and the BBC yesterday that shops would not be enforcing it, which was not what they were going to be doing. I think they're taking the leaf out of the buses books and the transport books where they don't want their staff injured. Other points are the staff don't have to wear one, but that's a totally different thing. But the buses are unique in the sense of you don't have any backup when you're out there. You are your own. But rule number one as a bus driver, the day you start, the day you go for your interview as a bus driver, you are asked the question, what do you do if a female is at a bus stop late at night and can't pay? You must get that answer right. Otherwise, you will never make a bus driver. And little secret here, the answer is she is vulnerable. Which brings us, again, straight back to the mast. And this is what we brought up when they brought it in. Children are vulnerable people. The elderly are vulnerable people. Are we supposed to leave a child, an elderly person, at a bus stop? No, because rule one oversees it all, vulnerability. If you leave that person there, they may come to harm. So you cannot leave them. We have people that get on our buses with dementia, right? They don't have a clue. Yeah? Are we supposed to leave them at the bus stop? No. Because they're vulnerable. You can only tell if someone's got dementia, or they've escaped, as we call it, from their care home. One, they're normally near a care home. Two, they're normally confused as hell. And with that information, we can make a judgement call. And normally then, by the time they're on the bus, they've already been reported to the police is missing. We already have a group call out, telling us to look out for them. And if we have them on our bus, we are expected to keep them on the bus, not chuck them off because they don't have a mask, because they are safer on the bus. Because the depot can tell the police what bus they're on, what fleet number they're on, what registration plate the bus is, and the police can come to the bus where the elderly person is safe then they can be returned home. Same goes for children. Children run away all the time from care homes. They are safest on the bus. I've had it before, I was doing Metrolink, I think it was, and the kid told me he ran away from, from his care home. I therefore have a duty of care to report that to the police. So that's what I did, and the police came out it was a bit late, but they got a description and they got him. They found him. I wouldn't say got him, but it's the wrong term, he's not a criminal. But they got him. So 
so be safe. If you ever have a doubt, always go to the bus driver. The bus driver has a duty of care to everyone. You may say, yes, but he's not doing his duty of care, or she's not doing his duty of care by letting someone on without a mask. The risk of a 90-year-old woman being mugged at the side of the road, even in broad daylight, outweighs her getting on the bus without a mask on. I'm sorry, but it does. And if you don't agree with that, that's just tough. But that is as it is. And these selfish people that call themselves Everyone else is being selfish, the bus driver's being a knob because he's not he's letting people over without a mask. No, we are doing our duty of care. The duty of equality. And that is that, unfortunately. We are bus drivers, we are not doctors. And it winds me up when people have a go at us. Me personally, people have had a go. As I said, people have dropped a C word bomb on me. You know? Other drivers have had the same issue where they're verbally abused. Diamond, I've had the driver spat at. And then the driver in the video that you see rightly turns around and says, not driving no further, this bus is now out of service. That's the bus driver's right to do that. And doesn't matter who doesn't agree with it, that is the bus driver's right. I have been spat at before, before coronavirus. And at that point, I refused to drive. It's our right. At some point, we have to draw the line. I've been, I've had get people try and headbutt the screen at that point. I refuse to continue in service. Not because I'm a... But because having someone, until you know what it is like, having someone attacking your screen, threatening you, headbutting, trying to get through the door, trying to rip it off its hinges, trying to rip the perspex down, is possibly, even for the hardest of people, one of the scariest things to come. Because you're in work. You cannot fight back until they've laid a hand on you. And that's just the policies. And it is sad that that is the way it is, but it is. Same goes with the people when you see the cyclists having a go. They can't fight back, we're not allowed to. We just have to sit there. So. With all these people, if you are watching this and you're one of the people that have been judging people for not wearing a mask, just stop. Get on with your life. Yes, they may put you at further risk. But remember, two months ago, at least, they said masks aren't that effective. This virus will only affect most of them. Uh, this virus will only affect a few of us. And that was that. That's all they said. And now they've got a massive U-turn because more and more people are using. Using the um, shops. That was a cyclist that didn't look and just cut straight across out of there. TFGM's improvised cycle lane, which is most supposed to make them safer, but it doesn't because no uses them anyway. They said that it doesn't really help and it offers very little protection. But all of a sudden, these masks offer loads of protection and everyone should wear them. It should be your choice whether you wear them and you should not judge others for not wearing them. Some people may not even have asthma, but the anxiety, even though they're not diagnosed with it, the anxiety of putting a mask on and having something that covers your mouth and nose can mentally trigger a panic attack or asthma attack and you might not even have asthma but it can trigger it because to you doing that with a mask you can't breathe I mean I can do that fine and it doesn't bother me with my hand but if I put a mask on it bothers me because 
your hands are free and there is something covering your face and it is naturally human instinct that you need to take that off because it feels like you're restricting your flow of air feels like you're suffocating so just don't judge people you know if there's someone without a mask on and you are one of these people that believe the masks work and believe that that's your belief your right to believe that your right to wear a mask sit somewhere else move away from them simple as that's all you have to do is just move away from them you don't need to make a big scene about it but anyway that is this morning's rant over and now I'm going to go get Callum Thank you very much for watching. Thank you very much for participating in the rant. And we'll see you later in our next video. And he is here already. Deeming his normal t shirts of use. We'll see if McDonald's get excited. There is someone here in a mobility scooter. How sad. So, thank you for watching and see you later. And this twat has got a cost of coffee. How sad of a person.